We're here, guys. Don't know where he at. So, I'm Brew Wednesday, guys. Paul, well, um, show my face. How do you do? Um, have a beer with you and give you a quick update what's been going off in the grain cabin. So, the taps and the pump is in. Now, I've not done a detailed review for you on these, have I? Um, you know, I'll do it for you. We'll, we'll, have, we'll have a look at it, but maybe another home brew Wednesday. Today, I will be drawing a pint off there, so don't worry about that. What's been occurring? Now, I've just had um, my cousin around here. Papa loves vegan, God bless him. One of the best blokes ever walked, he really is. Um, just popped up, it's been a nice afternoon, and yeah, he's left a bit, a bit, a bit of worse for wear, I must say. Give him a few mango ciders and got him on some five year old red wine as well and yeah so i think he may be asleep on the sofa now who knows but great to see him as always i will leave a link down to his channel below because he's put some new content out at the moment bless him right guys um my beers right this past i don't know i've gone off a year now if i'm honest i've not been that happy with my beers the taste of them and stuff like that I suppose we all go through this kind of, um, I don't know, kind of issues, don't we? So what I've had to do, I've just stripped everything back down, you know, proper cleanse everything. Pots made them all lovely and shiny again. Same with grain basket. And we've had a few beers on the go since. Unfortunately, my pump has broke. My Kick Kingdom pump 3000 is on that one. So it's not the fuse, check that. I think the motor is totally gone. I've even stripped it apart. It was lovely, pearly clean inside. I do clean it out regular. I'm just getting nothing from it at the moment. So I think, you know, I'm going to have to buy a new pump. I'm looking at that Blitzman Riptide. It's a bit naughty at £200, but, you know, <laughs> man's got to do what man's got to do. Um, right, so anyway, I've had a few beers on. First off, we had a Guinness. Now, if that come out and um, fermented out at around about 4%, uh, but we'll come to that later on because I will pour that Guinness for you. Um, the other beer I've had on the go, I did a, a Simcoe and Mosaic Pale Ale. Um, we're only looking around about 4.7, something like that, 4.8, but it had a lovely fat dry hop of 200 grams, so around about 300 in total. Just, you know, uh, malt wise, Marisotta and then Simcoe last off. Followed with a fat dry up of Simcoe and Mosaic. So it's tasting really nice at the moment, if I must say so myself. That'll be going on keg and ready for this weekend. Um, yeah, she's ready for pouring basically for Saturday. We'll, we'll, we'll rock that baby, put it that way. Um, and the other beer I've had on the go is a mild. Because I've got the pump, I love a mild on the pump. Take you back to, you know, obviously I'm an 80s kid, but. I can remember drinking my dad's mild in the pub or my granddad's mild in the pub in the 90s. So, and it's all, you know, it's, it's, it's gone now out of the tea, fell out of fashion and what have you. But it's always a classic and it came, come out around about, I think, 3.3%. So I'm dead happy with that. Um, and that is it now. You can see two more. It's, it's got a lovely pale chocolate colour to it. It was just literally Marisotta chocolate and crystal. Nothing too much. Only about three kilo of Marisotta. But it's tasting really nice, really nice and clean. And um, a nice drop of sweetness here as well. So yeah, I'm gonna bang that on the pump, why not? Um, the pump is actually, what do they call them? Pine 365, so if you look on their side, around about 175 pounds. I got this one from the malt miller though, simply because it comes with all the connections. They are like a John Gas fitting, and you, know, you need your ball up, quick disconnect. Um, straight to the keg, job done. Yeah, I'd normally leave it right about 10 psi for three days, so nothing too intense, but it's generating um, carbonation. I just draw it off, ain't it? I put my Guinness on there at the weekend. Now, just because I wanted a Guinness on there, I know a lot of people come on taps in the pubs, but I don't have the nitro here, I don't have the mixed gas. <laughs> it was very, very nice on the pump. Uh, I must have drunk about half a keg of it. Since then, I've took it off, connected it to the tap, obviously fourth carved it quite a bit more over these last couple of days, and thoroughly cleaned the lines out on 
this pump. But you know, very happy with that. And um, maybe homebrew Wednesday next week will show you, show me in action, drawing a mild off. Why not? Let's get to the main thing, McGuinness. Um, double taps, guys. Industrial style, steampunk esque. I don't know. Double taps with flow control taps. Come on. If you never use flow control taps, I tell you now, they're an absolute game changer. They really are. Very, very good. Uh, it just gives you that ability, doesn't it, to calm it down. It's going nice and slow at the moment, but then if I just knock it like that, it will speed up. But you can just knock it with your fingers and, you know, you're there. I tell you something, the thunder's coming now, I can bloody hear it. The rain's coming down. I think most of the country's already had it today, but East Midlands are getting it today, why not? We need it, my grass are just yellow. There you go guys, this is my Guinness. So, she's black as out. It has got that natural red tinge that Guinness normally has, but on the aroma, yes, it's roasty. Gonna go in, 4% exactly. We do have a little Guinness logo there. Glass, 50p outside Morrison's. Why not? Might have drunk half that bottle already, but... Um, now, malt-wise, Marisotta, flake barley, roasted barley. That was it. A little bit of um, the oats, porridge oats as well, but... Hoppage. I didn't have no Columbus. Um, Columbus. I didn't have no fuggles or goldens, anything like that. Talking about Columbus, that's what I used. Columbus, resiny, it's dull, it's dank, it's licorice and spicy. Of course it's going to work with roasted barley. That's beautiful, absolutely beautiful, 4%, a proper session ale. Um, It'll be brilliant in the autumn, don't get me wrong. Um, bit of a wrong time to do a Guinness, but I need to use a uh, roasted barley up. You know, adding that Columbus, you get it now. That spiciness comes and goes, but then your palate is just left with licorice. A lot of licorice. And to me, that works so well in a Guinness. You know, I know them flavours do impart on that as well, like an earthiness, literary root. Um, but Ah, getting a bit loud now she is um, but yeah Columbus for me in a Guinness I'll be definitely using that again for sure I didn't put nothing in a boil it was only like 30 minutes um, to go 20 minutes to go because you put too much Columbus in a boil it can make it too harsh they're, they're quite big on alpha acids I think but that's it guys me at the bar, having a pint. Got the old big whiskey bottle here as well from my uncle's pub. Start putting bottle tops in it, but I think I might get rid of them and start putting two pound coins in it. We minted them, won't we? When that's full up, really would. <laughs> so yeah, guys, that's it for me this week. Homebrew Wednesday is now wrapped up. Um, got a great glass coming for you, probably end of next week, I think. And that's an Eldorado smash. Why not, eh? <laughs> Guys, enjoy. Stay safe. Keep tipping it back.